I will start sharing the slide deck. Thank oh, you. Uh, Jeffrey, you may have to enable that, please. Okay, one sec. Trying to find you. Okay, it should work now. Okay, well, maybe I can. So, yep, I can start. So uh, I have a, a short deck. Uh, I'll start with a quick intro on uh, NRC, although most of you are probably familiar with the NRC. Um, and that's on slide uh, two. Um, over 2,000 scientists, technicians uh, across too many facilities across NRC, uh, 180 buildings across 22 sites. What people usually not as aware is that. Uh, we have over 1,500 R&D collaborations in a, over a year. Uh, a lot of those obviously with industry, which is our, our mandate, but uh, more and more actually with the university, colleges, and uh, polytechnics. Next. Uh, we're organized into a number of uh, research divisions. Uh, each research division has a number of research centers. These research centers have their own strategic plan I would like to uh, I would like to let you know that NRC has released about maybe two months ago now uh, its new strategic plan uh, that covers uh, 2025 to 2030 something like that. Uh, so it's available online if you want to have a look at it. I don't think you'll see a lot of surprises uh, in it. Uh, next. In terms of allocations uh, across Canada, again, I won't go through that, but we're from Victoria to St. John's. Each location tend to have some specialized facilities and supporting some uh, specialized uh, research. So uh, most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with uh, our activities in each of the province. Next. I mentioned a uh, strategic plan, okay, 24 to 29. Uh, there won't be a lot of surprises in that. In terms of uh, priorities, uh, I think we share a lot of the same priorities that many institutions across Canada. So quantum technology, digital technologies being one, climate change, sustainability, health and biomanufacturing. And we have also have some foundational research, especially in two areas that are mandated uh, by the NRC Act, which is uh, meteorology and astronomy. Next. Back in 2018, uh, NRC, for the first time, got authority to provide funding for research activities to research institutions. Uh, before that, the IRAP division had obviously authority to provide funding to SMEs. But on the research side, we didn't have authority to provide funding. That changed in 2018 when we got authority and a little bit of funding, about $27 million a year of funding to support that. And so uh, what we've done is um, created a new instrument called a challenge program, which is defined in time, usually around six, seven years, as a clear objectives. And uh, in, 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 in the context of these programs, we make... Uh, not all the time, but often we make calls for proposals uh, for uh, uh, professors, colleges to uh, propose uh, projects that would be in support of achieving that, that objective. And funding is available. So we provide grants and contribution uh, to the uh, institution in support. So we have a number of these programs right now in, uh, in activity. Some are getting toward the end of their life. Uh, but about every other year, we're launching two, two or three new uh, challenge programs um, on different topics. Uh, so uh, keep an eye for those because that's, again, a nice way to, uh, to have collaboration with the DNRC and get a little bit of money. Uh, next. Now, the reason why I'm reaching out to a lot of the institutions is because uh, back in uh, November 2022, uh, the government has uh, announced significant funding for the NRC 
to renew our facilities. So nearly a billion dollars over eight years, and then uh, about hundred million dollar ongoing uh, to renew our facilities. Uh, as you know, I mentioned earlier, all the, the sites and facilities that we have, a lot of these facilities were built around the uh, Second World War. And so some of them are, are, are pretty old. And the funding that we had was really insufficient to maintain them and uh, even create new ones. So that funding is really a game changing for us. Uh, going from very little funding, I mentioned a few millions a year to a hundred million dollar a year is a game changing. And so the president uh, two years ago asked me to create something to uh, manage that funding. And then uh, we created the uh, Office of Facilities Renewal Management. And uh, we have two objectives. The first objective is to execute the investment project. So uh, we have a, a team of professional project managers and their role is, is to execute for the benefit of our clients, these uh, investments that have been approved and funded. The second objective we have is one of, is one of investment planning. So uh, because we have this recurring revenue ongoing, how are we going, recurring funding, sorry, how are we going to select uh, the projects that we're going to fund? We did the first, uh, our first, uh, uh, forecast of excuse me of the demand across an RC and not surprisingly uh, our researchers have identified over the next 10 years about three billion dollars of, of, of requests and we have like one billion dollars so there's a, a three to one uh, demand over over the current funding so we have to put in place, a process to select. Uh, and the process that we're putting in place is not unlike what CFI does. Uh, so there'll be uh, proposals uh, submitted by our staff. Uh, they'll be evaluated uh, according to uh, a number of criteria. They'll be reviewed by an expert committee and then the final decision made by senior management at the NRC. As part of those criteria, one of those criteria is collaboration. We want to make sure that our researchers look at opportunities to collaborate with other uh, external parties. Now, at one end of the spectrum, that could be agreeing to work together and write a paper. That's good, collaboration. At the other end of the spectrum, it could be co-investment, where both parties co-invest some funding into a joint facility. And obviously, the co-investment uh, will be seen more positive, will score better uh, than uh, uh, a paper, but a paper will score better than no collaboration. Uh, and, and that's why we're engaging uh, a lot of the community across Canada to, to let them know that uh, we are in the business now of uh, seeking those collaborations. Next one. Uh, we understand, obviously, that uh, a lot of the funding in universities come from CFI, so we've been exchanging with them, seeing how we can work work together. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to say that there's a lot of uh, goodwill between CFI and uh, the NRC. Uh, however, there are some rules that CFI has, and there are some rules that NRC ha has that we need to be aware of. So. CFI requires that uh, the funding provided to buy equipment uh, remains a property of the university or the institution. Understood. The king requires that the funding that I use to buy equipment remains a property of the king. So uh, there's some things that we cannot do. So I cannot buy, we cannot share a piece of equipment where we put in each 1 million bucks. That becomes difficult. Uh, but we can, we can, I can put like $5 million worth of equipment beside $5 million worth of equipment of CFI and each equipment has their own tag and everybody's happy. So there's some rules that we need to be aware of. And uh, through discussion with CFI, we have, we have ways uh, 
we have ways to make collaboration works. And I'll, I'll give you a few examples on the next slide uh, because we have some of these things already working quite well at the NRC. On the next slide, please. Uh, huh? we, have we have such an example with- Sorry, uh, uh, sorry, just a second. I think uh, I see a raised hand. Uh, Jeff, do you have a question about this slide particularly? I had a question about the previous slide actually. I was thinking about the collaborations that you said you were exploring. And there's also these things that are called the global innovation clusters that the ISED supports. You know these groups, are you interacting with them? Yes, we've, uh, I, I, I didn't mention them uh, because they're really at the end of their life. But when the uh, super clusters were launched, we initiated a challenge program for each of those super cluster Okay. So that so that we can support them and support the the players uh, in them, uh, but most of these are getting toward the end of life now. So you expect them to just be wound down and yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I, I wanted to provide a few examples of how we we've been able to do this collaboration in the past. So uh, the first one is an example of an NMR NMR facility. Uh, at the NRC campus in Ottawa. The NMR, the NMR is a property of University of Ottawa. Uh, it was obviously funded through uh, CFI, uh, but it is it is installed and, and managed by NRC and maintained by NRC uh, and used by both universities and NRC. So the, that, that's one example. Another one very similar is uh, a, a facility with Miguel. So in additive manufacturing, uh, cold spray facility uh, that was acquired through CFI, but installed at the NRC in Boucherville, complemented by uh, our own equipment, by NRC equipment, uh, maintained by NRC staff, but uh, used by, by both uh, Miguel and uh, NRC. Another type of uh, collaboration we had, uh, two, uh, two examples uh, with uh, uh, the field institutes of the uh, University of Toronto and the University of, of, Water, of Waterloo, where, where we have our own staff uh, present in these facilities and working collaboratively uh, with, uh, with the university on a, a joint uh, Agenda research agenda, and in this case, uh, there was some CFI equipment that was that was funded as well. And then, what I often call the ultimate example is uh, the craft uh, facility at the University of Toronto, which is a, a very large facility that contains uh, both uh, university equipment funded by CFI. It contains NRC equipment that we've acquired specifically to be installed there. And it has our own staff that we've hired located uh, at the University of Toronto the Craft Facility. And again, the facility is used by uh, students, NRC staff, and uh, university staff overall. And we have a similar facility in Boucherville, uh, which is being uh, set up as we, as we speak. Uh, that will have, again, CFI-funded equipment from the EU, University of Toronto, our own equipment, and our own staff uh, in it. Uh, so a real strong collaboration uh, between U of T and uh, NRC in this case. Uh, next one. Uh, I won't go in detail to this one. This one uh, is a little exercise we did just to understand if uh, the the, side, the timing of the CFI Innovation Fund and uh, the NRC was good. And, and yes, it's not ideal, but uh, uh, what, what we, we, we realize is uh, either their decision comes before our decision or vice versa, but we are compatible in terms of timing. What I forgot to mention is in the case of NRC, uh, in order to secure the first a billion dollars, uh, we had to commit to some projects. Uh, they didn't want to give us like a, a blank check. 
So we had to commit to a list of 15 uh, projects. Those projects are actually documented on our website. You can, uh, you can see what they are. And these projects we are executing right now. And then uh, starting this November, uh, we'll be uh, making our first call for projects, what we call wave two. And every other year, every two years, we'll make $200 million available to our staff uh, to uh, present projects. And there will be a competition, an assessment, and then the release, release of the funding for uh, execution. So this funding not only is a game changer from the fact that it will change our facilities, but it's a game changer because it allows us to uh, plan long-term. Sometimes these large facilities, these new facilities, uh, need a uh, uh, significant uh, amount of time for to properly plan them. And you, now you're assured that even if your proposal, you want to submit it in four or five years from now, you know that there will be a, a call for projects. You know that there will be $200 million available that you'll be able to compete for, just like you compete for CFI. Our researchers will compete uh, with within NRC to get that uh, funding. And my last slide is really, uh, okay, uh, what do we do with that? Uh, and obviously our intention is coming out to you is, is to share that information. Uh, it's not confidential, so that's why it's being recorded and I don't have an issue. We wanna know, we wanna make sure that as many people as possible are aware that this is happening. Uh, whenever you have uh, projects in mind that you think are a good fit with DNRC, uh, we encourage you to um, reach out. Uh, obviously, for collaboration to happen, it's not something that management can force. It has to happen at the researcher level. So uh, if you're looking for uh, uh, contacts at the researcher level to be able to engage and have discussions, uh, the investment advisor like Larry will uh, will help you uh, identify the right person to talk to. Uh, if you already have contacts at the NRC, then engage with them. Let them know that uh, uh, there may be some opportunities to leverage our uh, each 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 uh, each individual funding to make something uh, larger. And any of the other ideas you may have in terms of. Uh, helping us build more um, relevant uh, more relevant uh, facilities for for Canadian research where we're quite interested and obviously my other goal in, in finding out more about your organization is our investment advisor like Larry they need to have a better understanding of what are the the core platforms that are available across Canada because the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure we don't invest in something that already exists. That would be a really a poor use of funding and taxpayers' money. So uh, we need to be aware of what, what are the core facilities uh, that are available. We need to be aware if they're open to uh, outside researchers like uh, staff at NRC. Because uh, that way, when Larry receives a proposal for uh, a new bio manufacturing line, then you can say, call, oh yeah, I remember now, uh, University of Montreal has something very similar. Why don't you talk to them instead of trying to build your own? So that's the objective uh, higher. And that's it. And I'm happy now to take uh, any questions. The last slide indicate uh, we have four um, investment advisors, each supporting one of the research division. So, Larry's background is in the life science uh, sector. Uh, but if you need to reach out to anybody in emerging or manufacturing, Larry can help, also help you uh, connect with, with anyone. Or you can reach out directly to either Tyler, or Mike, or Patrick. And on that, happy to take any questions, comments you may have. Thank you very much, Francois. I uh, I don't know if we have any other 
yeah, we don't have any questions so far in the chat. So, but yeah, if anybody has any questions, you can just raise your hand and unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you so much. Laurence? Oui, bonjour, merci beaucoup, uh, François. I think it's uh, really interesting to see um, what's happening at NRC right now. Uh, <clears throat> just a bit of background for you. Uh, I, I uh, used to work with the CNSP as a, a vice president, and now I'm doing my PhD on <laughs> impact of scientific platform on uh, in the research ecosystem. And I've and, uh, been looking, um, I'm very interested in two things. Uh, one is, uh, and this is something I'd like to develop, uh, is to have a better view of what's out there uh, in terms of platforms. So CNSP is one key player. You have the navigator on the other hand. And I know people from Laboratories Canada, I think, or IZ, uh, are, have been developing um, 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 like interactive database to, to understand what kind of research and equipments, uh, but big equipment they have uh, across Canada. So I was wondering if there would be a way for all of us to work together to build something comprehensive. Uh, so we know what's out there. Um, the government will love that because it gives a better idea of what, where to invest, where are the gaps and how to avoid the uh, duplications, which exactly what you said at the end of your presentation. And this is something we've been struggling with because CNSP is small and doesn't have necessarily the means and, and, and just it's not one person work, obviously. So do you have any beginning of solutions or ideas of how we could work together to get this uh, coming to fruition and become real at one point? Well, that's a very interesting uh, question and a very challenging one. Uh, as you know, in the last CFI calls, uh, uh, there's a special focus on, on core platforms. And I've, I've seen a lot of universities now um, putting a lot of efforts in documenting what their core platform is. So I think, I think prior to that call, it would have been difficult to get any type of database of core facilities across Canada. I think I think the universities are uh, at least uh, I don't know eighty percent of those I'm talking to have some active projects in place to do just just that. Uh, that's one. Second, uh, I know that CFI have been uh, have been proposing to expand their navigator into something that would do just that, that would, that would, that would uh, document and, and like a, a database of all major facilities across Canada, independent of the fact they've been funded or not by CFI, like, like a master. So I know they're thinking about it. I'm not sure where, where is that going? Uh, On the if um, yeah. Just just one quick, quick, quick comment, and sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Um, there's been initiatives along those lines in Europe, right? Several of them uh, in other countries as well, and some have failed, right? Um, so it would be also very interesting to understand what works, what doesn't work. Yes. Uh, before investing lots of resources, because it needs to be, we have tools right now, AI and other things that can really help us being more efficient. So I think that would be valuable to build something out of the box a little bit because just having a database and keywords, uh, all the experience around the world showed that doesn't work. People just don't go there. Uh, so just keep that in mind and I'm done for now. And uh, the other thing that I can mention is that the NRC uh, back in 2018, we didn't have an idea how many scientific facilities we had. And uh, one of my uh, colleague, Bruce Playfair, presented to you back, I think, to 2021, the facility review that we did. Uh, and uh, through that exercise, we've documented 123 facilities at the NRC. So at least, I mean, in our case, we have, we have that, that data. And uh, we're currently working in cleaning it up so that we can make it uh, publicly available. Oh, it partially answers your question, but uh, 
at least people will be able to uh, browse through what are the facilities that the NRC operates. So I just put a link uh, to Bruce's talk. It's on our CNSP YouTube channel. So if, um, I'm sure some things have been updated since 2021, but it'll give people an idea of the uh, summary of the report and the facilities that are available. I just wanted to um, uh, continue on a little bit on that that topic of the database because uh, I think two other things that are super important that um, I don't think are well developed in any region that I know of is really getting down to the instrument level, right? And and knowing what instruments are available and and like people can even go to my website, but then they have to go to the equipment page and then each equipment page lists the features and. We have two microscopes that are the same brand, but they're actually quite different with what's on them. And so I think this is a whole a whole aspect as well. Like if you know where the facilities are, do you know what equipment they have? And then the second part is the people, because uh, one of the things at the CNSP that we really emphasize is that uh, any major research infrastructure is not very useful without the expert sitting next to you who's who's going to work with you to train you or run the instrument or whatnot. So one of the, the ideas we've had, which um, we would love to have the resources to do would be to really make a research professional database so that you can not only find, and actually if you find the professional, you'll find the equipment, right? So I can probably tell you about most of the microscopes in Montreal, you know, or, or if I don't know, I know who to contact to get you more information, you know? And then the last point, um, which was brought to us by uh, Prima Quebec was a very, very good one um, along the same lines of what Laurence was saying that um, you need people to, to make the connection. So even if you have the database, you need dedicated people who are gonna connect the researchers with each other or the researchers with its industry and, and, and so on. So I think for a relatively small investment, if you had that kind of a database and you had the people to make the connections, it could have a, a tremendous impact. Yeah, that's a good point. There's also, um, you, you, I mean, you've raised a, a good point, Claire, is that uh, uh, there is scientific equipment, there's expertise, and then the combination of both is really a capability. Uh, but depending on, or depending on who your audience is, uh, you have to, to adapt the content. Uh, a lot of our interaction are with industries. They don't care we have a microscope, right? But they're not, they're not looking for a microscope. They're looking for a solution, right? To a problem that they have. Uh, and so they're looking more for a capability. And then, so, uh, so I, all that to say that I, I agree with you, but depending on you, who your audience is, you have to describe your facilities differently. Right, so an expert like you might be looking for a specific equipment. Uh, mm -hmm. An industry yeah. will be looking for capability, won't yeah. care about the equipment. Yeah, I love yeah. that um, blend of the two for the capability because another aspect I've seen is is sometimes people are like, well, you know, we already have that microscope, you know, at McGill, say, but now it's going into a neuroscience lab, and the other one is in a cancer area where they really have a lot of expertise in measuring tumor development and tumor cell migration, but now we're gonna put in a second one, but it's gonna be with a bunch of experts who really know neuroscience. And yeah. so the capability would capture both those aspects and would not see that as a redundancy. So yeah. I really like that idea, yeah. thank you. No, I really apologize, I have to go. Um, otherwise my boss won't be happy with me, he's probably not happy already. Uh, but Larry, who's has, has been with me on many of these things and be able to cover for I really apologize that I have to go. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Francois. Bye-bye. Uh, Daru? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that we at the University of Manitoba have tried over the last four years to get a a bit of an initiative to get a database or a capability list uh, put together so that researchers, whether they be uh, new uh, early researchers who maybe don't have equipment yet or more established researchers that need a particular component, whether that is a special 
light source or lens or whatever. So at least they we can make better use of the investments that the university and CFI or whoever the funding agency has made. There has been almost zero uptake uh, from management. Uh, the university administration doesn't see this in any way valuable and the PIs see it as uh, a waste of their time to put together this list or maybe even a challenge to what they have. And I'm wondering if anyone can speak to uh, any success in that because we still have it on the back burner. We think it's a very valuable thing to have, but it's been like like pushing snowballs uphill in the summertime. It's been, it's been a really challenging. So I'd love to hear if anyone's had anything that uh, they can help or it could help us move forward. So I, I can just speak from the NRC side. We've had similar problems, which is, you know, creating a database is one thing, but then maintaining the database is also the issue. And that's the biggest ick in all of this. Uh, and it's the same thing with Navigator. Um, when I talk to some of the NRC researchers that have pushed their facilities over to Navigator, um, they found there's been not so much uptake and there have been changes in the facility and going back and updating it is not in their interest. So, so one is, you know, is there an interest? I think yes, but the problem is, is maintaining that database. So at NRC, um, we don't have a database We'd love to create one. We're planning to create one on the new facilities that are being sort of put online as part of this new initiative, sort of our new initiative that's coming through. As we build our new facilities, as we update our new facilities, we're going to create a database. So this way we, we have something that we can track. Um, but again, it's maintaining it that's going to be the biggest issue. Thank you. Uh, yeah, before if, if, moving on. Uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd just like to answer a little bit about that question too. I think I'm cutting, is, is it, can you hear me? Yes. Good, thank yes. you. Yeah, uh, at, at McGill, in fact, we there's also the, the, the fact that, uh, you know, people want to set up you know, this, this sort of uh, database and list of uh, instruments and capabilities, but, uh, uh, there's so uh, McGill is trying to to set to set that, but just focusing on core facilities or research platform is not enough for for university. An institution wants to have the a view of all their assets. So of course, so just starting with the core facility may be a, an easy like a low low uh, hanging fruit, you know, easy to do. But as very often, I guess institutions are trying to do things globally. And have a global view, and that makes uh, all this effort uh, uh, much uh, much more hard to to complete, and uh, uh, it, it takes longer time to to do. I would just add. I think um, I put a couple of links in the chat there for um, Australia and Singapore, where they have some. Um, um, larger efforts. And I, I think the, if it's done well, the, the needs are the same for everybody. And so this to me is exactly the kind of thing that, that could be done at the national level rather than each institution um, or each department or, or each government agency doing their own thing. So mm -hmm. it would be excellent to see the funding agencies come together. You know, maybe this is something that could be co-funded by, you know, ISED or NRC or CFI, or maybe the institutions kick in a, um, a contribution. And, you know, things like the keywords that we use and the adding in the expertise and really making it about um, what you can offer in terms of capabilities rather than just about, I have instrument X and instrument Y. Um, I think this could be a really interesting multidisciplinary um, project that you know would be perfectly aligned with what what CNSP is interested in. Absolutely, and I think like I'll just add as well to that uh, something you mentioned earlier, Claire, about uh, 
the relationship building piece. I think that's again uh, where we see any of these platform scientists, platform managers, they are kind of that relationship building piece between the technologies that are available and what they can do. So I think that's kind of uh, continues to be that bridging gap, uh, that role that they play. And uh, maybe uh, we don't have any anything that supports that piece directly because they are constantly delivering on services. But then if there are there is some focus on how to uh, disseminate or, or or really impart that knowledge to clinicians, to all the other, other disciplines that what is the capability of these microscopes that how they can be used or any other equipment for that matter, that could be, that, that could actually help. Um, I, will, I would like to add something here is that we have, I think, we need to, it's been years that we're talking about that. So I think we have all the correct contact. We need to have a, a strategic discussion with people from CFI, NRC, Laboratories Canada, and IZ, because we all have the same needs, right? So in addition to include, you know, improve the efficiency of how we do research uh, in Canada, uh, I think it's very important also for international visibility. Uh, I can really see it being a really nice way to, um, to be to put Canada on the map on, on different respects uh, and and showing different aspects depending of how the strategy is uh, uh, how we want to put it, it is, we can be very creative around that. But I've heard the same thing from Laboratories Canada. I heard the same thing from IZ, from CFI, from NRC. Um, Health Canada potentially has the same thing. Uh, Agri Food Canada. So. The need is there and all universities, if you add that to, <laughs> to the pool. So we need to get around the table and, and, and build a project together around that. You need people, you need matchmakers and you need something smart because um, it, it's not gonna happen without a budget and without expertise. And just doing that kind of things requires a different bunch of expertise, not just a, 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 catalog, um, a catalog of instruments and expertise. Uh, we have uh, smart computer scientists all across the country. We have AI specialists. We have market people. We have salesperson. We have uh, uh, industry developer, like people that develop prototypes, that develop things uh, within universities. So we, we have the expertise. And I don't think it's going to move forward if we don't have a strategic meeting around that. Uh, and the need is, uh, I mean, everybody needs something like that. Uh, exactly the form we don't know yet. So I think the next step is is there. I don't know how to do it though, but we can figure it out. Larry, and then Chloe. So, so Claire raised an interesting point about sort of the granting council's funding and the database. So if we tie the two together in some fashion, where as, as we provide funding for facilities and equipment and we lack of a better word, mandate people to fill in a database and an expertise database because the paperwork's there. You've already submitted your proposal. All of the information is in the document. It's pretty much a copy and paste into, let's say somewhere else. It would be a nice way to start building this database. The historic side, side of it, like going back into the equipment that's existing is gonna be difficult. But moving forward, if we do it tied to the funding, because everyone, whether it be CFI, NSER, federal, wherever, there's paperwork involved in, in accessing money. I don't know of any organization that says, you know, I need a, an SEM, here's the money, go ahead. There's always documentation. And so if we capture that documentation, convert it to some sort of database, now that's one step forward that we can do as a community. That's a great idea. So oh, um, I would be, I'm sorry, I would be a little bit the, the ugly duck in, <laughs> in this. Um, the, the, the problem and the recurring problem, because we have, uh, and we have talked about this for, yes, for years, um, is this navigator. Uh, the government of Canada is investing a lot of money, um, trusting a lot of people there um, who already based at the beginning it was like you said larry it was actually based on the cfi grant so all the cfi equipment should have been in the navigator we all know that navigator doesn't work very well the update is actually 
with all the skills that Laurence just mentioned across uh, Canada, uh, having receiving a Word document to update your facility on their website and sending back this Word document doesn't sound really AI based. <laughs> um, but still like that. And we receive regularly um, uh, email from uh, the I don't so if we I don't remember if we say the, the director, but saying, oh, there is new things on Navigator. Now you can put any kind of microscopes, even if they are not CFI funded, etc. So this means that it's there is a recurrent money um, from the Canada government going to this navigator. And each time there is this problem, if we launch something new, they are, the Canada will not fund something that they are already investing in, invest, invested in. Um, we need to have, I think, the key will be to, make, to, to have navigators, the people working at Navigator, working with us. And then we can secure this money or we can really collaborate and not having something in parallel because each time when we will propose something, when we will ask for money, Canada will say, we have Navigator, and that's I think that's a big issue. Sorry to uh, to put more the challenges and the yeah. solutions, but I think that uh, unless there is no more opening ears at Navigator about what really needs to improve, and they should be open for color collaboration, I'm afraid that we are going to talk about this issue or this challenge. Uh, for other several years. So I think that's a really good point, Chloe, but I think we could maybe marry those two ideas, right? And so maybe the solution is to work with CFI to add the functionality we need for Navigator, right? Because for me right now, it will send somebody to my facility, but then they have to go to my facility website to see what equipment I have. And oh, absolutely. My but maybe we could work with CFI to add first equipment level information, to add information about platform scientists, to see is there a way we can fund some people to actually you know, mine the database, maybe use AI tools to say, oh, these two people should be yeah. collaborating or, you oh, know, so I think, I, I don't think your comment, I mean, I think your comment frames the challenge appropriately, but I think, I don't think it, uh, means we can't do this, right? It's just, it's one mechanism to doing that is to really collaborate with CFI and, and get them around the table and see how we can work with them to make Navigator more functional. If I remember well, Laurence mentioned in the past that we tried to contact Navigator people and they were at first like open and then they didn't answer. So that's, that's the behavior that I'm afraid of is that how to well, push them, maybe yeah. send a, a comment later with, you know, NRC and all these uh, yeah. already stakeholders and oh. say, see? Mm -hmm. So I know that NRC is listing their facilities on Navigator now, and there's new leadership, there's the Stream 3 core facility funding. So I, I think now is the time to re uh, reopen that conversation. Yeah. Sorry? So maybe, you know, looking, thinking about what Chloe has said, maybe we have to think out of the box a little bit. Rather than do a traditional database, why don't we develop like a chat GPT version? Uh, and, and it's not that hard to do, right? Uh, chat GPT, they provide the engine. You can feed it Word documents. You can feed it proposals, funding proposals. You can feed it a lot of information. There would be an appeal for people to go to a, you know, a navigator chat GPT version where they say, you know, I am looking for a microscope. I live in Ottawa. Is there something close by? And they give you a list and you can narrow it down and say, uh, my expertise is in NMR. I'm looking for, it would be something that would pull people to the platform because now it's interactive and it would be easy to feed because it would take documents and use that document and mine the documents for the information. So it'd be one thing, you know, rather than go a traditional database, we go a, you know, 
AI or chat GPT version. Yes, and I think that's a great idea, Larry. And I know we were talking as part of like another uh, initiative that we are kind of working together with the ABRF, like the US counterpart of uh, how CNSP is. And we were thinking about it, like how chat GPT could be fed the data. I think the main challenge, which I believe like there is that continues to stay constant is like who, where do we get all that data from? And that needs to be constantly like kind of updated at least like every every few years at least i would say so that's the part like you know creating that information or actually starting off with that data that that can, that is one of the challenges but i do see that there are probably already historic data that we have from nrc navigator from sorry cfi navigator then we would likely have the new mechanism how nrc starts to collect that information and then there needs to be like a mechanism of how we feed that into an ai based tool to make it very specific so and 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 somebody is constantly updating it after every few years so so i just just to to try to wrap up the different ideas here. Uh, yeah, Chloe, we've been through those discussion many, for, for, so I thank you for re putting that up in, in, the, in the conversation. Uh, we've been trying to do things on our own um, for many years. Um, and But I, I do believe that uh, as Claire mentioned, some th a few things have changed right now um, that we can move forward and I think we need to bring in not just uh, you know CFI obviously and second to 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 continue on my result um, we, there's so many process you can automate to extract data um, there's ways for many many university websites it's easy to I'm not saying it's easy but it's feasible to have a script for each place that updates automatically when Claire you update your website then it can update the future database, whatever. And I really like the AI type of approach, uh, like ChatGPT approach, um, because I think that's where things are going. Um, so we have the research, I'm sure we have the researchers and, and specialists in Canada to, to, to brainstorm around that, um, knowing that there might be some other challenges. And I, I like during the presentation of Francois earlier, um, there's also um, who who these things will belong to. You know, is it to the crown or to the government? Is it to the universities? So I think there's also a governance or science policy layer to it that we need to discuss as well. I don't see why it should be such an issue, but we need to be sure about that. And uh, in yeah, we first we need to meet understand if there's a common need and a common uh, will to address that need and 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 get going because as Claire mentioned I think things have been changing past, over the past couple of years and the momentum I think is there and there's a lot of pressure also internationally to showcase the resources you, the scientific resources you might have so um, I want I want to set up that meaning. <laughs> I would just have maybe another question for you, Larry. If if I wanted to um, collaborate with NRC in one of these initiatives, um, but I don't have a contact right now, what would kind of be the process we might go through just to get started to investigate whether there's some overlap or or who in, within NRC I should talk to? Or... Oh, you're on mute. NRC is quite large, right? And yes. and so in. Francois' presentation, the last slide, had the investment advisor. So if you can narrow it down to one of the divisions, you can easily drop an email to any of the investment mm -hmm. advisors and say, pose your question, you know, um, if NRC is in that domain or has that expertise or the capability, we'll definitely link you up with the right person within NRC. Like we'll do the e-introductions, we'll try to facilitate up to the point where you know, the two researchers are, are good on their own and then they go off and, and work. So we'll do the, the matchmaking um, and we can be easily be your, your point of contact into the NRC. Okay, thank you.
Chloe. So thank you. Um, so if we, so for uh, Larry too, um, if we would like to collaborate, but uh, not at the level of uh, of uh, research to have papers, but more on infrastructures, um, we would also contact you and see if, so if we already have, let's say an idea of, uh, let's say I would like to build a, a, a more a platform with several equipment that will uh, uh, we have the purpose to study uh, uh, single molecules and uh, uh, various like particles. Uh, so I would contact you and see if there are some collaborations or uh, funding opportunities with NRC at the Ota or at the, uh, Ottawa, for example, on the Ottawa site or. Yeah, so so if, it, if it's life sciences that so we're looking at, you know, virus, virus particles, yeah, contact me and we can start a conversation. And then um, again, I can direct you at the NRC. If it's, if you're looking for funding, NRC does have the challenge programs. If there's a challenge program that does match, then we can direct you that way. So then this way there's some funding. If it's infrastructure money, and in other words, you know, we want to develop uh, or buy uh, microscopes or PCR or something of that sort, then we would have to put a proposal together to the NRC and and we would do a, like a co-investment type of proposal where the university would maybe put in some money, the NRC would put in some money and we would put a proposal together. Okay. So That's there's good. there's a couple of different options depending what the collaboration, where it goes. Okay, sounds good. Maybe email um, yeah, just kind of to follow up on that uh, opportunity piece for investment or co-investment kind of opportunities. Uh, would So are these uh, funding opportunities available primarily for the acquisition of uh, infrastructure or is also for maintenance and kind of long-term upkeep as well? No, so like the operational funding, cost. Yeah, so the funding that, that Francois was talking about that close to, well, that 962 million it's only for capital equipment or what we call CapEx. It doesn't come with operating dollars. So the operating dollars would have to come from the collaboration from the research centers themselves, collaboration with the university, collaboration with the NRC researchers. So we just provide the, the capital expenditure. Got it. Thank you. I don't see any other questions in the chat, but a lot of interesting ideas, I think, uh, <laughs> are right after that chat GPT and AI has triggered a lot of good discussion. So if there are no more questions, I think we can uh, formally like, thank you, uh, Larry, and also to Fonsa. Like, but uh, we would definitely continue to keep exploring these opportunities uh, and likely connect with you again after like our community is really large, like as, as I mentioned earlier already, like this is a cozy group, like a small group. Usually we uh, conduct these conversations every month. So we will be sharing the recording and we will be sharing the slides as well. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more questions that will come and we will, we know now who to contact from NRC and uh, you'll surely hear from us as well. So thank you very Great. much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you.